They say somebody the most put the gun on them. Brother Greg, he'll ride them up out of the gut. He'll take one of the others and sit right in church. I ain't never really thought out and done too much maintenance and he'll die. And then he'll take that old brother and he'll wash them up and say to him, I appreciate that. that. Appreciate that good old song. And uh, that's pretty well done to us. All right. Watch them old sins. The great old preacher used to say them sins to the white people was up all night. Watch the plan. It's like a white sheet. Mama used to hang on the line. Make you claim, make you a fit, son. You for heaven, the possible Bible say through him. Right. Not through us. Not through uh, the good works of what he does. The body of Christ through him, through that precious blood, hallelujah. What we appreciate that today. Appreciate each and every one of you being here today. It's so good to see you here this morning. Some of you look at the just look. I'm one of the ones that just look. But I appreciate the whole, appreciate each one of you being here. And uh, we still couldn't have church for that. So thank you for showing up today. And, uh, Remember the service tonight. We're going to see revival off. Brother Mike Craft is going to be here preaching for us this evening at 6 o'clock. And uh, y'all know Brother Mike. And, uh, so, uh, and then we'll have some special sightings as well. And then uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, we'll be back here for the service. And uh, we'll have Brother James and Merle some preaching for us. And uh, he's a young man, young preacher. And uh, y'all probably know him. He's from mine. Uh, I have a baby about being a banquet. He ain't a banquet, but I have a baby. Because a lot of churches, you know, they get the, the, the big evangelist from Waycross. I have a baby. I have a baby about Waycross, Georgia. Waycross, Tennessee. He's from uh, Waycross, Southern Indiana. <laughs> he's from Waycross, Southern Indiana. So, uh, y'all come on out. He's a wonderful man of God. Young man, so, uh, and I'm just looking forward to services and we can get something from the Lord and get about And I ain't nothing wrong with having a person who's playing cross, so I can stand that. That's all right. But, uh, I like home clothes, say, man. I just like home clothes. Bible tells us to know those who play their own. So, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, all right. Colton, you got a minute to record? Huh? You want to play a member of your daughter? You don't want to play a song or nothing this morning? <coughs> all right, he's be a body this morning. I'll give you a piece to it now. Two pieces. All right, we want everybody. Other little young bunch of kids with them. Heads to the walk-in plants with them. They've uh, got the sore throat or the nipples or something or another. So, so they're not here, so we'll just, we'll just go ahead and get right on into the church. Some of y'all just want to come on in and get right on into the church. Somebody maybe have a song on their hearts or word of testimony. That'd be all right.
the Lord gives it to you about before the service. I mean, that's just the way it is. But this morning, I got up pretty early and got to thinking and meditating on this portion of Scripture. And uh, the Lord just, overall, I thought, just kind of brought me back over here to the book of the Psalms, chapter number 85. Such a wonderful portion of Scripture. I love the book of Psalms. Uh, and uh, it just uh, kind of really speaks directly to our hearts. And uh, we'll be preaching this morning on uh, the title this morning of the message, Will is, Will Thou Not Revive Us Again? The psalm is here, the Bible says in Psalm 85, to the chief musician, this is a psalm for the sons of Korah. Lord, as to, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. See what? Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thy anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out uh, thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Let's pray again. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to you this morning. God is humble as I know how, Jesus. God, to bow before the throne of grace and to bow before the nails start feet today. Jesus, once again, to ask you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fill us with the Holy Spirit today, God. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would be prevalent today here in this place. We pray for us. We pray for anointing. God, I pray for anointing this congregation. Lord, this is my family seated here today. This is my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Jesus, I love them this morning. And Jesus, I know you love them. Jesus, there's needs here that need to be met. God, I don't know what those needs are, but Jesus, you do. You're the great physician. Lord, they're physical. They may be mental. They may be psychological. Lord, whatever the need may be today, Lord, I pray that you'll meet the need. And Jesus, I would ask you, Jesus, today, Lord, to minister. Jesus, personally, to every heart that's here today, Jesus, I pray that you'll take your nail scarred hands and break the bread of life onto this, the table of thy people's heart. God, you got my angels round about us today, Lord. Back up the opposing powers of the hell and the devil from all this church and all of our sister churches and brother preachers round about us. God, we thank you for this day. We pray that we can rejoice and be glad in you. Help us, Lord, today to rejoice in our hearts. Or with praise and thanksgiving out of thy name. Or what you do for us now, we'll thank you. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we said, wilt thou not revive us again? Is what the psalmist is a saying here. And uh, as this morning, as I kind of thought on <coughs> this portion of Scripture and on this thought, I thought how I believe the Lord is more eager to meet with us probably and revive us sometimes than we are even uh, to meet with him and uh, to uh, communicate with him sometimes. Uh, the God of heaven, the one that sent his precious son to die on the cross of Calvary. All oh, as uh, uh, the uh, redemption for all mankind to shed that precious blood. Uh, we know today that his ways are not our ways and our ways are not his ways, his thoughts and the way he thinks is so much higher than what we could imagine or what we could think. And so I believe today that it's uh, the uh, uh, desire of God's heart to uh, send revival to his people, to the Bible. Now, the Bible is for those uh, that are alive, those that are born again. Uh, we could, uh, listen, we could have a great church revival. And we could uh, get on fire for God. Then that way we could have a community revival. Brother Greg, that's the way that revival is spread. It's like a fire is spread. Uh, I remember one time when I lived over in my school, I was living there beside Dad and in our uh, uh, trailer that me and Janet had. 
And I burned out there in the front door one day, and I was uh, burning out the beach line. What I was doing, I burnt out through there. And uh, the fire came and run up out the beach and got us, you know, into a few little holes and eyes and was burning the leaves. And I put it on out, got done, went up to the house and sat down. And I heard my recliner. I was sitting there eating a hand sandwich, watching television. And uh, hand was here, just a little thing back then, you know, just about that tall. Uh, about, probably about the age of old, and she went some more with Dad. And uh, she come in the front door and said, Hey, Dad. I said, Hey, Dad. I said, What are you doing? She said, Nothing. She said, Why is the front door on fire? I said, The front door is on fire. <laughs> I jumped up and looked out the door, and the, the fire was just a going out there through there, just like that. Right along with the log bushes, burning all the leaves, and uh, going right down, and, you know. Got on out through there. And I said, Dear Lord, jumped up and ran out there. Dad <coughs> wasn't over around. Right. He just pulled up and went on in the house. I guess he was there in him a half there. Uh, but uh, I was dragging water hose and sweat, water applying to the work. Uh, and I finally got it put out this <coughs> way. But I, what I had was the forest spray. I thought it was out. But that little ember, they was a little ember down there somewhere that ignited the whole fire. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, the Bible could have once again spread like that. Right. And uh, the words, you know, I've been a quote in here uh, several, for about a month probably, uh, that uh, he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. So we need to seek after the Lord. The purpose here in this portion of Scripture, I believe, is to ask the question, will they offer by as us again? And the answer to that question is God is willing and wanting to revive His people. In Psalm 84 and uh, verse number 11, the Bible says, For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, praise God, that we serve a God uh, uh, that he ain't going to withhold anything. I believe if we sincerely <laughs> desire revival in our hearts and souls, uh, that God, like a sun and a shield, uh, will give grace and glory. And he won't withhold anything from those that love him. Hallelujah. Do you need grace and glory this morning? Do you need grace and a shield this morning? Uh, uh, can I tell you I'm preaching about one? Uh, uh, hallelujah. Glory to God that can give you grace, uh, uh, that can shield the fiery darts of the wicked with the, uh, with the shield of your faith, uh, uh, that put the helmet of salvation on your head, uh, uh, that shod your feet with the gospel of the preparation of peace. Glory to God. Uh, I'm glad we serve a God today uh, uh, that can meet every need that we have. Amen. I wish I could meet all y'all's needs. I really do. I wish I could do it, Brother Greg. I wish I could go to folks and just, uh, folks and just say, I want you to be better. You're healed, but I can't do that. I can pray for it. There's only so far, but Jesus is a friend. Praise God, this is closer than a brother. He's the one that'll go with you all the way under the end. Uh, and that's as far as we're going anyhow. Praise God that uh, one of these days we're going to step across that river. Uh, uh, he's going to hold us by the hand, glory to God, uh, and take us across those chilly waters. Uh, and we're going to step into God's great land uh, and live forever in a place called heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Oh, God will give grace and glory. No good thing. I guess that's going to have to be my verse for the day. I, I usually have a verse of Scripture that I adopt every day. That has to be it. No good thing will He withhold from them. That all comes right with the Lord of hosts. Oh, Lord of hosts, where is is the man that trusts Psalm 34, 8 and 9 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, he is saints, for there is no law to them but that fear him. Hallelujah. The devil sometimes even tries to make us a fear, God. 
He does. But that's enough. But uh, God's not given us, the Bible says, the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. The author of this song is that really unknown. The audience is Israel, and it's us today. And the subject is the long, the suffering, and the merciful Lord. The threefold fall from this psalm is this. Number one, the psalm is a prophetic in nature. And hence, the future restoration of Israel after the great tribulation period in the context of Scripture is what is clearly seen. Number two, the return of the people of God to a land after 70 years of captivity. If you notice in verse number one, he says, brought back the captivity of Jacob. And uh, Jacob was, uh, uh, he was the supplanter. Uh, he was a type of really the weakness of man, if you will. Uh, uh, but God, after 70 years, uh, he was bringing them back. And number three, it's to relate to us today as God's children, the hope for the Bible individually and collectively. I'm still not giving up hope on your life, either individually or collectively. Listen, oh Jonah, God told you to go down to Nineveh. There's hundreds of thousands of people down there in that city. They were so ignorant of the Word of God. The Bible says they couldn't discern the right hand from their left. They were the wicked bunch. And uh, God finally... Uh, tightened the screws down on uh, that, uh, uh, that preacher and he went down there and he preached unto them and uh, they uh, repented in sackcloth and ashes. They fasted for three days. And then the king gave her that sackcloth and ashes on the donkeys and the animals. And he made a proclamation that nobody ain't going to eat. Uh, hey, we're going to wait and see if the Lord maybe he might be merciful unto us. And God revived that bunch. And I'm uh, holding out hope today that God can still revive us today. Amen? Right. If you want to buy it, God will send it to you. Amen? Individually or collectively. There's been times in my life, I must confess, uh, uh, there's been times in my life that I've gone down pretty low, Sister Judy. I feel like sometimes that uh, uh, sometimes Brother Terry, we just feel like if you beat down. And uh, you know we used to sing that old song uh, that uh, seems like we cannot go one step further on. Uh, you know, and it, it just uh, drives along. Uh, uh, but then I think of Jesus and all He done for me, uh, and a crowd of rock of ages high down me. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad we got God, and I'm glad we got Jesus, and He can revive our hearts and souls. There is nothing too big for God. Brother Lonnie was talking in the Sunday school lesson about a man that he ran into uh, that just doesn't understand if God could save, if God had enough power, and the one was powerful enough to save everybody, and a whole lot more if, if they'd go to it. Uh, he made the comment, I just don't think there's enough of it. Can I tell you today there's enough of it? Yeah. Hey man, there is enough of it. Uh, there's more than enough of it to go around. Uh, that we'll never expend uh, God's goodness and God's righteousness. We can't expend the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so he'll do that and we can. Hey man, he'll do that. Hallelujah. So there's hope today. There's a hope for revival. I would encourage your heart this morning. Don't give up. To not give up. Don't give up on those loved ones. The background of this psalm written after the return from Babylon, they've been in captivity for 70 years, then a marvelous, miraculous restoration. The return to the land of ruin. They return to a land of debris and desolation. They return to a land where the temple was destroyed. The city walls were torn down. Seventy years of abstinence had gave way to destruction and ruin. And at this junction stands an unknown archer and from the petition of verse 4 through 7 we learn that the occasion 
of this song was the time of national humiliation. And until that time comes nationally, and until that time comes personally, we'll never experience revival. Right. Humiliation. I thought you were a friend one time. We're, we're talking, talking about services and preaching different places. He said, I went to a place to preach. Uh, uh, it was a little old brethren church. I think he said it was down uh, on uh, Pitcher Road. He said he got in there and got to preach, and then people got to pray to God and shouting. He said there's a little old woman, a little old uh, lady, fell out in the aisle. Said she started crawling more to the altar, saying, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And can I tell you today uh, uh, that we are worthy through the blood of Christ, uh, but can I tell you today that through our own flesh, uh, and until we get to a place where we're humble before God, uh, and that comes from the preacher back, amen, and, uh, uh, that God won't revive us till we get humble. Moses was, the Bible said, he was a humble man, more humble than any man uh, uh, the other than the Lord Jesus Christ, I guess. But he was a friend of God. So we need to get humble. That's what we require. Humbleness. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 4 says, The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Find God been good. God's been good to us, young. God's been good to us here in the United States of America. The goodness of God leads us through the people. Job, we can use him for a biblical example. Chapter 42 and verse number 5 of the book of Job. Job was a prosperous man, uh, but he was reduced to pot, shirt, and ice. The richest man in the country was sitting in pot, shirt, and ice. Sometimes God has to get us back onto that point. And then sometimes we get ourselves back to that point. I've already mentioned him. We can remember peace. He, uh, he went out and wept bitterly. And after he denied the Lord, all oh, but God understood him. And then uh, there was the right to revival under King Hezekiah. They came back. Now, think about it. Think about what the children of Israel came back to. And as I thought about that, I thought about the brother Brad, what if what if we all left Chestnut Grove for 70 years? What if there hadn't been nobody around here for 70 years? And then a remnant, our uh, offspring, comes back to the community. What are they going to find, Daddy? The house of God in shambles. Nobody's been here in 70 years. The grounds have all grown up. The doors may be falling down. The windows may be busted out. They had to come back to that and start rebuilding. But the Lord is going to revive. He's going to revive. Now for revival, I'm just going to give us a couple of things. I believe that we need for revival. And then we'll be done. Number one, now for revival, we need an acknowledgement of who God is. We'll see that in verse number one through three. An acknowledgement of who God is. Notice what he says the first, the Lord. Capital L O R D. That's Jehovah. That's the self-existing one. Before anything was, he was. He doesn't need mankind before existence, but mankind needs him. God without man is still God. Man without God is still nothing. He's Lord. We've got to acknowledge who God is. Acts chapter number 17 and verse number 28 says, For in Him we have, uh, for in Him we will and move and have our lead. 
say, Carissa, what does that mean? That means every breath I draw into this body, God gave it to me. Every heartbeat, God gives it to me. Every time that my eyes blink, God lets me see. And God lets us hear. In Him, we live. We move, we have our faith. In Him. It's all about Him. It's all about acknowledging Jesus Christ, the God of heaven, for who He really is. Uh, he is our Redeemer. And uh, He is all we have. He is why we live. John chapter number 1, verse 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In him was life. And that, that life is the life of mankind. It's all through him. We acknowledge him for who he is. Not only does he say Lord, but notice what else he says. Thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Oh, can I ask you the question today, has God been favorable? <laughs> The answer is resounding, yes. God has been favorable unto this land. God has been favorable unto us. We've probably got more material possessions now than we have ever had. Ain't that right, Danny? I mean, I've probably uh, got more stuff than I've ever had. Most of us, I'd say, do, uh, if we want it. God has been good to us down through the years. Thou has been favorable. But can I tell you more than a material possession? God's been favorable to us spiritually. Right. Hallelujah. He gave his son as a ransom to die on the cross of Calvary to shed his precious blood uh, uh, that no matter what we face in this life as a born again Christian, uh, uh, one of these days we're going to see him uh, uh, through our eyes and not through the eyes of another. Our faith's going to end inside, Lord of God, uh, and we're going to enter into that rest with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He's been favorable. Here we could give the idea of Reconciling unto himself. Also in this verse, thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Sister Crystal, I've been for 70 years. They thought God had forgot about them. <clears throat> they might have thought, Brother Grand Boy, we really messed up this time. You ever thought that? You ever do something? I thought, well, I really messed up this time. Now, this is going to be a train wreck right here. There ain't no way I'll ever recover from this. But can I tell you, we serve a God, if you're one of His, He ain't going to boot you out on the sidewalk. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you mm-hmm. I'm glad we've got a loving God. Sister Lois, I don't care. Uh, we, we, we do wrong sometimes. Uh, and uh, sometimes we uh, uh, get a little sideways. Uh, and I know there's consequences for our actions and our sins. Uh, uh, but thank God we serve a God uh, uh, that ain't going to boot us out once we're one of His. Uh, we can run back to Him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for my sins. The Bible says that He's faithful and He's just to forgive us of our sins if we ask Him. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad for that today. Oh, he's been faithful. And he's brought back, uh, he has brought back the captivity <clears throat> of Jacob. The long suffering of God. Hallelujah. His forbearance. Romans chapter number 2, verse number 4 tells us of the riches of His goodness and for balance and along the suffering. Once again, not knowing that that goodness leadeth us to repentance. So we, in verse number 1, we acknowledge who God is. In verse number 2, He's forgiven. 
Notice what he says. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. See you Aren't you glad for that today? Praise God. I'm glad for the New Testament, but I'm also glad for the Old Testament. You know what God's been doing down through the years? He's been covering the sins. Amen. Uh, he'll expose it. He'll show, he'll show people their sin. Uh, he'll say, this is what you're doing wrong. Uh, this is against me. Uh, uh, but if you'll ask me to forgive you and repent, that's what I'll do. Yeah. I'll forgive you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered their sin that see lost. What does that mean for us today? That means there is a path filled with blood. For all from the mangled stain, and sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all of their guilty stain. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, that's what Jesus does. Uh, that's what His blood does. He covers all of their sin. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the Bible says He's cast it away as far as the east is from west uh, and thrown it into the sea of God's forgiveness. Hallelujah. Why well, isn't that today? He's forgiven. In verse number three, we see His fierceness. That has taken away all thy wrath. That has turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Now we see here the first of three verses of this psalm are attributes of God. Number one is His favor. Number two is His forgiveness. And then number three is His fierceness. But we notice it can turn from His fierceness. He said there in that verse that thou has taken away all thy wrath. Taken away, as it were, the wrath. Uh, like the foot died the wrath, but he took away by his mercy, and he took it away by the cross and by the blood. Mm-hmm. So that's where the power lies. Hallelujah. Oh, God. He is fierce. I'm afraid today that people want to be a little too buddy buddy. You know, we're not just buddy buddy. He's God. He's the God of heaven. Yeah, we can go to him. We can go boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, but uh, this new modern day stuff, all this casual stuff uh, about God, I'm just going to go along with a whole lot of things. There's fierceness about God, and we should have a reverence and a fear for him. Amen. Read uh, Revelation chapter number one, verse 13 down to 18. His fire is white like wool, his eyes are in the flame of fire. His feet are like fine branches, as if they're burning in a furnace. And his mouth is a sharp two edged sword. But here it says he's turned from his fierce. God has the power. He can turn himself from his fear. He says, Thou hast turned thyself. Thou hast turned thyself. There has to be a substitute for our sin. As I read this this morning, I thought about Abraham and I. <laughs> See, there had to be a substitute, Brother Darren, for our sin. I thought about way back over there in the Old Testament. Father Abraham was looking forward toward the cross. Through the mountain peaks of prophecy. Now we're looking backwards toward the cross. We've got the full revelation of it. We know what happened. Back in the Old Testament times, just the Lord said, didn't have that. They didn't have the Bible like we have it today. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Abraham stepped out on faith. One morning, God told Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac, your only son. I want you to take him up there. On the mountain, and I offer him for a sacrifice unto me. The next morning, Abraham got up. The Bible says immediately, uh, he saddled that little ass, and he took some servants, 
And he went on a three days journey and he told the servants, wait here while me and the lad go yonder to worship and we will return again. And as they walked toward the mountain, uh, he had little Isaac by the hand. Uh, he might have been about the same age as you, Colton. Uh, he was up carrying him by the hand, uh, taking him up on the mountain. Uh, and he said, Dad, uh, he said, Father, here's the wood, and here's the fire for the sacrifice. Uh, uh, but where is the lamb? And Abraham looked down at that little boy and said, Son, God will provide himself a lamb. And 2,000 years later, somewhat after they had got there uh, on that very same mountain, praise God, uh, uh, Jesus Christ came uh, and provided himself uh, a sacrifice for all mankind. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, he forgives. Uh, he can forgive sin. Uh, and he can refrain. Uh, of the Bible. You know what your Bible is a priceless for? Your Bible is a precious the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so, and I am who, and he wants to remind us under what he says. Oh, God, he's saying, Abraham said, I, I think God will provide himself mm-hmm. a sacrifice. Now, that leads us to another question. Why did God have to have a sacrifice? The answer is sin. What, God, what makes God angry? Why did God, why does He have to even turn? He's had wrath here. He's been fierce. Why does He have that? And He's turning. It's because of sin. Mankind has a sin problem. I don't think there's enough preaching against sin out uh, in the uh, uh, in the religious world today. Right. Sin is still sin. Sin ain't changed. It's just like uh, this morning with uh, uh, with uh, Cain and Abel. There was the sin that followed the flight. It was disobedience to God. And they brought it in, sin. You get to chapter number four of the book of Genesis, and there's two brothers, Cain and Abel. Cain was a timber of the ground. Why they ain't the right to God? The, the earth was just, uh, he did, the curse had just came on and it was still. Uh, producing, I believe, a whole lot better than it does today. And there ain't nothing wrong with being a tiller of the ground. I love, I love getting out and digging this ground plant stuff. I like watching stuff come up. But then there's a, he was a shepherd. He raised the sheep. And he done what God told him to do. They went to the altar where they were supposed to worship. God, in chapter number 3 of Genesis, had uh, slain an animal and clothed Adam and Eve in that skin. And I believe that after that, that, that they were uh, prompted to start making those blood sacrifices so they will come to the stone altar and sacrifices unto God, and God accepted it. But well, here comes Cain. Boy, he's got a wife and love me. He's got puppies. He's got green beans that long. Big old mountains. Taters. Uh, what else do I like to do? Blue taters. Onions. Yeah, a lot of onions. Big old onions. My nose. Yeah, he had everything you could find off the squat. Big old car. I can see him coming in. He laid his mat before the altar. It's beautiful. Mankind will say, yeah. Well, that is not. We will accept that. God said, uh uh-uh. That ain't what I say. Cain was wrong, the Bible says. And God asked him three questions. Why are you wrong? If thou was not accepted, sin is lying at the door. 
It gives the idea of a crouching tiger. We know that the Bible says that the devil's a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Sin is that roaring lion. Sin is that crouching tiger that makes no respecter of persons uh, uh, that's going to jump out and growl at him. So mankind's going to sin for all. And can I tell you, we can fight forward from that time up here. I guess 7,000 years, however long it's been, it ain't changed. Man, God still got a sin problem. We were conceived in iniquity. So we have a we have a problem. That is why that we needed a redeemer. That is why that we needed a savior. That's why we needed that land. That's why God was mad in you. And that's why that he had wrath and he turned from it. And he turned from the fierceness of his anger. Let's move on. Verse number four. It makes a little turn, the song, the song does here. Here he says, God's already turned. Now he says, Turn also, God of our salvation, and cause of thy anger toward us to cease. God, in verse number three, turn now, turn us, O God of our salvation. <laughs> I'll say three things about that. Number one, God has the power to turn us. God turned me before, and I just didn't like the way He does it, Brother Lawrence. And sometimes He'll turn us. Won't he? Sometimes when I was growing up, I didn't like the way my daddy turned me. He turned me over His knee, what my tail is. I didn't like that. Sometimes God has to do it the same way. I still believe God's one that'll take us out behind the woodshed if we need it. And give us uh, give us what we need. Amen. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Because he loves us. God has the power to turn us. The psalmist said, Turn us, O oh God, of our salvation. He not only has the power to turn us. He has the provision to turn us. Right. Hallelujah. He knows just exactly what it takes to do it, Brother God. Mm -hmm. And He can do it. He has the provision. He has all power. He has all provision. There's nothing too little or too small or too big for God. He has the power to turn us. He has the provision to turn us. But they had the person to turn. And that was Jesus Christ. I hope I'll ever turn to him and turn to the whole devil. What do you There's a world full of folks out there today that are so deceived. They're turning straight to the devil. And that always happens. But I believe in these days it's uh, progressively getting yeah. better. The longer we go. So turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger uh, toward us. See, verse number five, wilt thou be angry with us forever? Here's the question. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? I'm going to give you the answer to that question. Straight out of the Bible. Psalm chapter number 79. Verse number one through five. The psalmist in Psalm 85 says, Lord, God, will thou be angry with us forever? Here's your answer. Psalm chapter number 79. Verse number one through five. O God, the heathen are come unto thine inheritance. Thy holy temple help. They abide, but they have laid Jerusalem in heaven. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be made unto the foul. Of the heavens, the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the earth. Their blood have they shed like water round right about Jerusalem, and there was none to bury them. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. How long, Lord? How long will thou be angry? Forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like a fire? The answer is no. Oh, God won't be, listen, Israel, uh, he won't be 
like that forever. He's going to turn. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse number 6, he says, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? God will not be angry with his people forever. For will be a payday someday for unbelievers. But as far as God's people goes, listen, he's not going to be angry with us forever. Right. So verse number 6, we see the need for revival. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? So if there's a need for revival, but why, preacher? Why revival? Because sometimes we get complacent. Sometimes we get cold and indifferent on God. Sometimes we get casual in our approach toward a holy God. We must remember who God is and what Christ has taught us. Amen. We can uh, grow weary as well do it, even in the work of God. I heard a, a, he was a, used to be a famous preacher. He was on television all the time. Got a great big ministry up a going. And uh, then Chandler. And uh, they were interviewing him. And this man ended up going to prison for what he did. They interviewed one of his, uh, the people that, one of his uh, aides that helped him. And they said, you know, when the ministry started out, they said, it was about the Lord. He said, we prayed every morning. We read scripture together every morning. Then the, the big time came along. And uh, we started getting famous. And then the television program come along. And then the money started flowing in. And guess what? Jesus was forgotten about. It. God, it was forgotten about. It. You, can I tell you, you can uh, concentrate more on the work than you do the same. Sometimes we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water for a little bit, but when he got his eyes off Jesus, he started saying, mm -hmm. Lord, save me. And the Lord rest out. And the Lord saved him and saved him. We must remember who God is and what Christ has accomplished. Will thou not? Revive us again. And that brings me to Second Corinthians, chapter number seven and verse number fourteen. Can I tell you this is familiar scripture to us? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and see my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Can I tell you, I still believe that verse. I believe that all scripture give a my inspiration to God. If it's in the canon of this Bible, whether it's in the Old Testament or whether it's in the New Testament, it's for me and you today. Yeah. If my people, you know what that little word if is? It's a conditionary clause. If my people put their call on my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Here's the condition. That's the condition. Then I will hear from him. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I was sitting on the front porch this morning. I was meditating about this portion of Scripture. And this thought came to me real great. What if every born again believer in the United States of America does what that verse says? So we turn this country upside down, we turn it up on there. I'm talking about God's people. I ain't talking about the religious people. I ain't talking about the, the denomination. I'm talking about God's people. I'm talking about those washed in the blood. I'm talking about those that are in the church of the living God. He is the people. That's us today. Called by His name. Humble themselves and pray and see my face. 
turn from their wicked way. You say, Brady, did God speak last week? You buddy, they sure did. That's why they went into captivity. He said, you're. But he said, you're a dead boy. You're from heaven. It's a good verse to And shall hear of her land. Now my eyes shall be opened and my ears of the kings under the pride that is made in this place. You know what I was He said in the latter part of verse number six that my people, that thy people may rejoice in thee. So there's a need for rejoicing. Verse number seven, show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Oh, when he does that, I believe the writer is praying here. He's seeking. And uh, this is the need to rejoice in. Verse number eight, we see a need to listen. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and do his thanks. Let them not turn again to fall. Let's go turn. Back to the folly of this world. There's a need to listen. Verse 9 through 10, there's a need. There's a need to fear of the fear of the Lord. This is reconciliation, I believe. Surely his salvation is not them that fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. I love this verse. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed one another. Here's the reconciliation of need for a fear of the Lord. Verse 9 through 12 for a promise from the Lord. Verse number 9, help is at hand. When trouble is nigh, can I tell you, salvation is nigh. For God is a very present help in a time of trouble. Mm -hmm. Then he said that glory may well in our land. That we may have the worship of God assembled among us. For that is indeed the only glory that we have in the land. And when that is gone, empty bodies rose over the door. The glory of the Lord will glory. The glory of God does dwell in the land. Amen. That's what you do because. And we say in this morning, mercy and food for them together, righteousness and peace have kissed one another. Truth shall spring up out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from the heavens. What a burden. This is restoration this morning, sir. The return of God's favor when people return unto God. If you have a need this morning, I invite you to come and watch you play. He returns unto them and abides with them in a way of mercy. And so man's truth and God's mercy, man's righteousness and God's peace meet together. If truth springs from the earth, that is out of the hearts of man, which is the proper soil for it to be grown in. Righteousness, that is God's mercy, shall look down from heaven as the sun looks down upon the earth and the cross from which it brings forth. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and her land shall heal her increase. How's your increase this morning? How's your spiritual land that buried this morning? Some burning 50 souls, some burning 10 souls. Maybe some burning one fold. That's our question this morning. Is our answer about the right of the world? Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall give her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way 
of his faith. This morning, do you have a need? Do you have a need in your life? Maybe, listen, maybe this morning you want to come down here and you want to pray with you. I want to do that this morning. I want to give you that opportunity. Anyone? Richard, I have a great need in my life. Something bothers me, whatever it may be. Anyone this morning? Anyone this morning is right with you? I, I do have a need in my life. I'm going to raise my hand this morning. I want you to pray for me. Anything. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hands up all over the Thank you so much for those arms. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I want to thank you today for the service. Lord, I know that Jesus in my thoughts, they may be scattered. But God, Lord, I know the your word when you take it. Jesus, and when you break that bread of life onto the table of your people's heart, Jesus, I know the demand that you ask for them gets strong, but Lord, evenly and where it needs to be. Jesus, this morning, you saw the hands of your people this morning that were raised. Lord, we love them this morning. Jesus, you know the needs this morning. God, I ask you today to be real to them today. Jesus, there be a realness of your presence today in our hearts and souls. God, give us a realization today and acknowledge it. Jesus, that you know your presence. And have us the law to you today. Amen. Lord, remind us again. Fill our hearts with your love. Reach into our souls with far from the love. To thy name, Jesus, this morning, be Lord. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the blessings of life. This is us now, Lord, in your power, in your spirit. And Lord, now what you do for us, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for coming out this morning. Thank you for your attendance. I hope that was a blessing unto you. Now, uh, like I said, remember the service tonight. Can I call? Come on back. Uh, special grace, special signing. And uh, I'm expecting a final here tonight, Brother Greg. I really am. And uh, so uh, come on back and be with us. And uh, we'll just worship the Lord again. Now, listen. One of these days we're all going to be in heaven together. We're going to be worshiping up our end of the We can go practicing down here. Uh, one old uh, preacher I used to listen to, he was an African American preacher, an old timer. He was way back. And uh, he was preaching a big meeting somewhere. And Somebody came up to him, the lady came up to him after the service and said, Richard, I don't know why you get so excited. He said, well, I'm preaching about Jesus. One of these days we'll be worshiping in heaven. And, uh, but he said, I'll tell you one thing. When we get over there, he said, you better get out of my way. So, you know, I guess he was going to run away. But uh, I appreciate y'all this morning. I love you. Hope you just have a great rest of the day. And uh, you're a liberty to know. God bless you.